and a very big thank you to the RRG Group, who are my latest sponsor and will be throughout the season, going home and away, all over Europe, the FA Cup, of course, the Carabao Cup as well, and in the Premier League. Thanks for your support, guys. Many people have asked me down the years, why I'm a City fan? Why do I go to every single game, home and away? Because that's what I've done, basically, since the 1970s. Uh, I've revolved my whole life around it. My career has been built on going to every single Manchester City game. I've been lucky because at times I've been paid to do that, other times I haven't. So why do I do it and why does everybody else do it and what makes people a City fan? Is it because of the beautiful football? Is it because of the camaraderie? Is it because of tribalism? Could be watching this on TV. Um, why be stood here in the rain? Well, my commitment, my obsession is probably too much, really. Not everybody's quite as obsessed, but lots of City fans here today are certainly committed to being here. So let's find out their personal reasons for being at Manchester City against Southampton this afternoon. I've been a City fan all my life. Grew up with Dennis Stewart and Peter Barnes and that. And... But why? I don't know. Just... I don't know. There's no explanation. No, no, no really. logic. Yeah, there's no logic. What about you? Uh, for me, I was taken to Main Road by my brother, who was quite a bit older than me. He's, he's here today, watching the game, and I think he's about 77. We finished running us up to Liverpool in the league that oh, season. Yeah. And he, he brought me, and it's just took off since then. And it, it's just part of life now, you know. I couldn't sit at home and watch it, because it's just not the same. So even though it's a bit drizzly and a it, bit... It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, they're attending the games, he's... Any true fan like yourself will know there's no substitute for being here. You can sit in a pub and watch it, but no, nah, it's not for me. Well, I've been watching City since 1972, so it's in my blood, so I just can't miss a game, you know. Um, so I wanted to turn out, support the boys. We're going to catch Liverpool or hopefully soon. We're going to ratchet up a big score today. It always rains in Manchester anyway, so this is normal weather for us. And it's just an honour and a privilege now to come and watch this team, so you won't want to miss it. But why is it in your blood? Well, it's in my blood from sort of being a boyhood City fan. You know, I used to go to Main Road, first game nil-nil against Burnley. Uh, I should have known then, really. I've been a season ticket holder ever since. I come from a family of United fans, so I was the black sheep. And, uh, yeah, just something that I absolutely love about <laughs> City, the club, and, uh, yeah, I think... It's just part of me, it's part of my fabric, it's part of what I've grown up loving, the highs, the lows, being able to have a good moan um, when we drop down into the low divisions and going to places like uh, Huddersfield away on a cold night, you know, watching, watching night games. I was just reminiscing the other day, going to Coventry and uh, giving Les Seeley some stick and we got beat 4-0 and Les turned around and... Uh, stuck four fingers up to us at the end of the game, you know, God, God rest his soul. <laughs> Again, yeah, and uh, there's something not so pleasant. So, so yeah, um, when, you, when you're a kid and you start reading into the legends of the club, you know, I mean, I was lucky, I saw the back end of it, but, uh, yeah, the club's just steeped in history. I mean, they say we've got no history, but we've absolutely got history and we've had heroes through the ages and uh, this is my club. Well, I won't stood in the rain until you stopped us. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like he said, but, no, love it, love it. Love the camaraderie with all, all our mates, and we've been through all the bad times. We're loving these good times. We go to all the right. Wembley trips. Alex, Sometimes you don't stay you awake, but yeah, it's a great day out. Great day with your mates, and... Uh, Love being there. If you really thought about going to football and the amount of money you spend and the amount of heartache it can put you through and, and that you're cold and you've got the flu and that maybe you sit next to people who are a pain in the what's it, you would think twice about it, but football fans don't. You, you just do it. It's, it's, it becomes natural. Over the period of time that we've been watching City, Ian, it's a natural thing to do. And actually, you then would question yourself why you didn't go to the football rather than why you do. It's a sort of necessary obsession. Absolutely, it's part of what we are, isn't it? Part of what we are. Explain to the people watching this why you're obsessed with City, and even the rain and days like this. Well, it's an easy question for me to answer um, because my dad brought me to Manchester City when I was three years of age 
and um, in all various guises I've been uh, I've been there ever since which would make it 73 years it's so, in your blood isn't it so yeah, that, that's a, that's one of the easiest questions that I've ever been asked it's, what about you Andy well I'm very fortunate to be employed by the football club on match days so um, regardless of whether weather sun rain or snow you know I'm fortunate to be able to come here and work and watch a very very good team play football um, and Yes, the weather the weather is uh, very Mancunian, but um, the the standard of the football never changes. So you know we'll be entertained again today. Listen, as you know, in we've been together, either worked together or alongside each other in a commentary box at York, at Wickham, at Stockport, at Crewe. We're not getting the best results. I was, of course, I was doing it. I was doing it for the radio then. But as you know, I go to away games. I was at Brighton for last game of the season. I go to as many away games as I can. Why? And because I like the camaraderie of the supporters. I like the football club. And it's in your blood, you know. I was, I was here since I was 14 as a schoolboy. Although I went to, uh, to West Brom, I had a chance to come back. I didn't come back. I should have done. But I'm back now, and I'm back where I belong, watching this great team, and hopefully some more silverware this year. You mad? Absolutely. So you go to pretty much every City game. Why are you a City fan? Why are you so bothered about being at every game? Well, I can't afford to go to every game. I go to most, but. Uh... Trotman playing with a broken neck in 1956 was what got me interested in City. I mean, I'm not, from, I'm not from Manchester, I'm from Blackpool originally, even though I live down south now. I mean, I've lived down London twice, you know. But. Uh, Can you explain uh, why you're a City fan then? I don't know. Why so bothered? Why so passionate? Well, it, it, it's happened over the years, you know. I mean, all this bloody Bridalia, I mean, I've, I've collected over the years, you know. Uh, the only thing ready in our house is newspapers. So, uh, oh, you, you know, when you, when you support a team, you support them, you know, you support them or you don't, you know. I mean, it's, it's, uh, so, uh, the tend to support a team and stay at home all the time, they're not supporters. Now, obviously, coming to games for you is quite an effort. It is. What is it that you suffer from? Being a City fan, a cerebral palsy, really, but more than that, being a City fan. It'd be a lot easier for you to watch games on TV, so why have you come out on a rainy day like today? There's nothing like the match day experience, is there, Ian? Nothing like being there live. Our first game I came to was Ipswich Town. We played Ipswich Town here on the 31st of October, 1970. I've been coming ever since. You can't get it out of your blood. I know, I know what it feels like. Enjoy the game. All right, thanks, Ian. This type of day, the typical Manchester weather sums up City best of all. Um, it, it's a case of basically getting up in the morning, you know the match is later, OK, you're going to get salt to the bone, but honestly, you've done it all your life, you've got to carry on doing it. And I would uh, implore future generations of Blues that are watching this, this is actually what it's all about. Forget all the razzmatazz, forget all Sky TV and everything else that goes with it. It's all about the match going fan. And we've got to keep that up because if we lose that, football is absolutely nothing without the fans. Coming over here in the rain, as, as you said, like watching four days ago, same team over and over again. Do we know what's going to happen? Who knows? You know, who knows? The rain doesn't stop any fan to come to watch anywhere. If you're sitting at home watching City or, you know, there's a local team called Cork City, it's not the same. You want to be in amongst the fans. You want to be singing blue on top of your lungs. You want to smell the food. You want to hear all the noises. You want to come meet people like you as well. You know, so you know it, it's all. It's not just about you know being a city fan, but it's coming experiencing it all, feeling, putting on that that scarf, putting on that hat. You know, knowing what you want to be. You know, even my son. My son's two in February. The day he was born, it blew on him. It blew on him every single minute. My missus, all our family it's united, hasn't changed the miss. They try to put united on him. Nah, it doesn't work. Doesn't work, he's a blue, always will be a blue. Like me, win, lose, or draw, doesn't matter. We come here and get beaten on today, I'm still back next week. On a wet day like today, uh, why don't you just stay at home? Why have you bothered today? It's a match, match day. It's wet though, it's raining, it's no. miserable. It's always raining. Could you found something better to do? No. It always rains here. It always rains here. And where, we, where I come from, it's even more rain. Wales, you get nothing but rain. You didn't get up this morning thinking, oh, I don't fancy it today. No, no did you? No. Why? Because I do fancy it. I remember when I worked at the uh, the BBC, I was offered the chance to go to Sydney, the Olympics. And I can't remember which city we were playing, but I knew I'd missed some games. So what did I do? I stayed in the boys' city. Of course I would. Why would I go out to Sydney, to the sunshine, 
It's the place to be, isn't it? Fingers crossed. We'll get the same results we had the other night. No, oh, I'm more. I'm, I'm with my lad, and he wants more goals. To be fair, he was a bit disappointed last uh, on Tuesday night. So, uh, well, oh. fingers crossed that we can get the Watford result again. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. definitely. Good, good six, seven, nil. To be honest, you look a little bit bedraggled. Oh, is it dear. worth the effort? <laughs> Has it been worth the effort? Yes, in today? absolutely. Yes. Couldn't, wouldn't you rather stay at home? No. <laughs> what makes you like this? Passion. So what, what's the reason you follow City even in the rain? Because I'm, I'm a dedicated, loyal fan of, of, of the club. And because we're champions, there's no reason why I, why I don't need to be here. It's, it's born, you're born and bred to this, aren't you? You don't choose it. You don't. You know. You live in Manchester. You know the weather's going to be rubbish. Uh, you know. You, you get out of bed in the morning. You just look forward to watching City, don't you? I've had a season to give the last 28 years consecutively. Whether I work match days or not, I'll be here. I'll be supporting him. This is what football's all about. A wet surface, gloomy day. Cheers you up, mate. And watching City out there, 11 men winning this game. Nothing better. Sets you up for the weekend, doesn't it? So uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. Keep the rain coming. Bring it on. Bring it on. We're just like this, aren't we? We win every game. Allegedly. Speak to everyone. See you again, Sir Ian Cheeseman. I'll never forget you. Know, I've all nothing, Ian. It's never life. forget you, Sir Ian Cheeseman. Live and direct. You are the man. You're the top man. Yeah, but what I want to know is why wow. the storm might be here. Well, because you know what I mean? Manchester. Like, with a capital of rain. With a capital of rain, Cheeseman. You'd know rather that. be here than watch it's, on the yeah. standard yeah. in the pub. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Unbelievable. We top are man. playing unbelievable stuff. But we're here because we love City. And we're lucky Manchester City. We love them. And it's all because of Mr. Bell, Mr. Royal, 70s Doyle. kids, us. We so, just love it, you know. And you know what? God bless my auntie Elsie. She's up there now. She yeah. got us there when we were nine yeah, at Main Road. Yeah, yeah. She in, put it in us. Straight in. You know what? You know, straight fair, in Platt when, you're in, when you're in your 50s, Cheesy, you know, we've seen yeah. not a lot of good. Now we're reaping the fruits of it, I think you know, Southampton come here you know, to defend basically, but they, they got the early goal, a bit of a mistake for Medicine, uh, and then it's been you know, non stop City attack them. Um, but you know, they've defended well, haven't they? Throw bodies in front of the ball and blocked everything, but I think it'll just take that little bit of magic in the second half you know, from a De Bruyne or Sterling. And I'm sure once they get the one goal back, then they can go on to get the three points. So it's just a matter of time. Yeah, for me, yeah, I think you know they've, they've attacked a lot. They just need, they just need to be a bit more clinical and you know a little bit of magic just to open that uh, resilient Southampton defence up. We started a little slow. I thought we played slow, but in the second half it was we were all on their side of the half. Um, it just started creating chances after chances. This really Where did you come from, this? from Texas. Yeah, from Texas. We're. Uh, this is my very first city game. I've been following the, the team for about 15 years. And uh, to be able to come out here for the very first time is like a dream. You know, to see it in person, it's there's nothing like it. Just, the, just how smart they are and how fast they move the ball and how they strike the ball. It's just it's incredible to watch it live. So, you had that last 10 minutes for me. Yeah, uh, I was nervous, I'm not going to lie. It, you know, they were sat in like nine, ten guys behind the ball, but when we, we got that first goal, it really broke it up for us. We were able to, uh, to get the win, so it was, it was incredible. So. What did it feel like? I don't know. I've got an incredible amount of pride just uh, as a City fan, even though I'm not from Manchester, just being around everybody, hearing them chant and uh, hug, you know, hugging the people next to me. It's just, uh, you just feel part of the team and just having a tremendous amount of pride to be here, to be a part of the fans and uh, to, to support the team. So.
an excellent game. I, well, it was a good game. It, it was a very, very good game. The refereeing was questionable. Uh, the crowd was brilliant. It was a very good supporters game. Fantastic. Just tell me what it felt like watching that last 10 minutes. Was it, it felt nerve-wracking from my point of view. I was saying it's nerve-wracking. We felt, I felt we were in control. I felt we were on top of the match. Um, I did think they were going to get their goal. They suddenly became much more animated, started to play, uh, but it was still a very good game. Very, very good. Game. Relieved. Yes. <laughs> very. Hi, hi. I'm a pleasure, pleasure to meet you, and uh, I, I love your vlog and the work that you do. Uh, this is my first time at the Etihad Stadium. Uh, I, I used to live in Manchester, 85, 86. I've been to Main Road. But this is just amazing, the football we're playing, and it's, uh, I was pretty worried there, but uh, we turned it around. I'm so happy to be here. Describe what the emotions were like in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, nuts, nuts. And then all of a sudden they had to attack. And uh, it was, it was, uh, I was at the, at the, uh, this, oh, the far end. I couldn't really see the goals, but uh, it was amazing. And I was just like, I had a feeling before the game that it would be a tricky one, uh, but, yeah, it was just like a grind. They, you know, we tried from the flanks from all the time, and it just uh, didn't work out. But then when we actually, you know, got the goose egg out of the way, then uh, yeah, we we played great. But so many chances and uh, amazing football. What can I say? Reminds me very much, Ian, of that game two seasons ago, that two-one here, Sterling, 90, 95th minute, whatever it was. It was one of them games where you know they got a goal within 11 minutes and. It was one of them where they were always going to score and then sit back and we were going to have to, you know, attack and attack and attack and attack and try and break that defensive block that they were going to put there. It was resolute and to be fair to them, it's negative, it's anti-football, but they're desperate for points so I can't blame them for doing it. But we were relentless, we kept going and going and going. Some of the football at times wasn't great, we were playing a bit predictable, we were playing into their hands a bit, you know, big centre half, trying to look balls in, a bit like the Wolves game. But in the end, we found the answer, and you know the answer was, in the end, a ball into the box, believe it or not. And Angelino, wicked ball, Ford and come on, within a minute, an assist for Angelino, if you want to call it that, a ball into the box, and we got the winner. And you know me, Ian, the most optimistic fan you'll ever meet. I never doubted us at 1-0. I was with my cousin Alfie, his first game you saw on the vlog a minute ago, and I told him at half-time, don't worry about it, you know, you've got to set the rough with this move, go back out second half, we're behind the players, get behind them, push them up towards the family stand and see what happens and we win the game 2-1. So for me, some good performances, some not very good performances, but three points in the bag, and I'm just gutted that they managed to get three in the end as well, but we'll go to Anfield next week, and three for me, I reckon we can get them, really do. It's the real language, their goalie is quite subhuman. Uh, the ref is a red ref, wearing red, and it was the most disgusting display, but what a wonderful champion comeback. Absolutely immortal, and I'm a legend anyway. Yeah. <laughs> They kept saying it's coming, City, it's coming. That's their favourite little call. <laughs> uh, have they got names then too? Uh, no, they haven't, funnily enough. But uh, I've got seven others at home. You know, uh, this is a new rosette from the uh, ladies in Stratford. Yeah, just Did you so... always believe that that was coming? What were the uh, nerves uh, like in a second? Oh, terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, they did everything, you know. All that attacking possession, lovely football. You just have to hope. It's coming, you know, brilliant. Hello, this is Willem from the Netherlands. Um, the first boy, the first half was not very good, and uh, I thought they showed a lack of inspiration and a lack of creativity. But in the end, emotions ran high, and the victory was ours. What did you feel like as a fan watching that in the last ten minutes? Um, quite confident that the game would be ours, the points were ours. Pity Liverpool uh, scored as well. Are you telling me you weren't jumping up and down with relief when the, uh, the winning goal went in? Yes, of course, we did, but um, confidence uh, had the upper hand, so uh, it was all right. Well, I must admit, I didn't come to today's game expecting it to be such a nerve-wracking finish as it was. City had to work really hard for that. You've got to give some credit to Southampton. It's not that long ago that they were beaten quite heavily by Leicester. Uh, they came here, they were well organised. Uh, they were determined not to be rolled over and very nearly won or drew the game. 
and it was only through absolute determination, great support from the crowd of course, that City got themselves over the line. Uh, quality in the end just about won out, so it was a big relief at the end and uh, when the winning goal went in from Kyle Walker, well that felt like a, a cup winning goal. I know it wasn't, I know it was just one match, it was just three points. But when you're a City fan and you live and breathe every moment, uh, you do enjoy those moments, even if they are just one game and one three points. Anyway, thanks very much for supporting my vlogs, really appreciate it. I'll be back out and about at Anfield next week, of course, so I'll see you then. And as ever, a very big thank you to Hot Click Marketing, who can get your company to the top of Google searches. So give them a call. And thanks for your support, guys.